people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. Delhi Moscow ties have been subjected to unwarranted media glare and trial since the war broke out between Russia and Ukraine. Delhi has always maintained a pro peace, pro people position. Despite this, many have raised questions over India's import of Russian oil, and others have asked India to toe the line of the United States and the Western world. India and Russia share a unique relationship, however, one that cannot and should not be solely dictated by other countries who are not part of this dynamic. Indian and Russian diplomatic ties have been time-tested and are economically symbiotic. The relationship provides advantages to both countries and New Delhi will never break ties with an old friend who has stood by India's people. India is the world's fifth largest economy and is projected to overtake Japan and Germany to become a top three world economy. India's economic policies have been particularly fruitful in the last few years and they are projected to continue driving the economy upwards in years to come. A surge in pent-up demand in a reopened world will further boost India's economic growth rate. While many countries throughout the world are bearing the brunt of a high inflation-driven downturn, India's economy continues to blossom. India's pro-peace, pro-dialogue approach to world affairs is the one that makes sense for her economy and her people. So why should India copy the West's Russian condemnation and isolation? A rational approach for an industrializing India would be to avoid any unyielding positions that may affect her growth momentum. Be it any tech hiccup, a trade barrier, or a diplomatic obstacle, India would be wise to avoid conflicts. We do take side of the reason. The reason is that there should be no war, that there should be peace, that the UN Charter should be followed. So those are the kind of things that dialogue and diplomacy should be given preference. And when we say so, we are not merely uh, articulating them as a matter of principle. Indian foreign policy is determined by the interests of her own people and not by what others desire or try to dictate. India has refrained from picking sides whenever an attempt has been made to polarize the world by any individual force or any grouping. Modi's government feels no pressure. This fear will be in your mind, not in my mind. I think it's not my fault, it's not my disposition. I think there's no fear. A look back on history makes it evident that India has always been a neutral and pro-peace country. From being a co-founder of the Non-Aligned Movement in 1961 to today's unambiguous position of dialogue and diplomacy, India has, time and time again, said that she wants peace and she will always promote and pursue peace. India's realist leadership is cognizant of the fact that it is her sustained economic efforts that will catapult her from a low-income country to a middle-income country. It is the result of this philosophy, and not one of blindly choosing sides, that India's real GDP, according to the World Bank, will register a 6.9% growth in the 2022-2023 financial year. New Delhi has also made it clear that she will always prioritize her people over politics. Her oil import from Russia is singularly based on low price oil availability from Russia. This should not be interpreted in any other way. For us, Russia has been a, a steady and time-tested partner. And as I said, uh, any, any objective evaluation of our relationship over many decades would confirm that it has actually served both our countries uh, very, very well. It is our fundamental obligation to ensure that the Indian consumer has the best possible access 
uh, on the most advantageous terms to international markets. Over the years, India has had economic, military, and diplomatic needs, which Russia has always responded to considerately. Whether it was 1971, when Western powers colluded with the rogue military establishment of Pakistan, or when India's gasoline-driven economy needed low-priced oil to keep its economy on track, Moscow has been a tried and tested partner to Delhi. Their time-tested friendship, coupled with an ever-expanding camaraderie, provides economic and cultural benefits to both. The Western world, and their media in particular, needs to understand the nuances of the India-Russia bilateral relationship, one that thrives on cooperation and not on conspiracies. There are many who say that India-Russia relations are criticized because India is emerging as an economic superpower and diplomatic heavyweight. India's first priority has always been looking after her citizens and their interests. India's pro-peace, pro-people, and pro-diplomacy approach is the one that will continue to guide brand India towards new heights, economically and geopolitically. Moving on. As if the stories of despair and depravity were not enough, the Taliban-ruled Afghanistan is now staring at another crisis which is manifesting itself in the form of a health emergency. While the Taliban's opaque administrative model has barred media and people from accessing genuine information about any diseases or deaths, an outbreak in pneumonia cases and their sudden spike, especially among children, has set the alarm bells ringing for local authority as well as the international community, which has remained a mute spectator since the Taliban took control of the region in August 2021. <music> A dark emotion of helplessness and pity sets in as one visits this hospital in Afghan capital Kabul, where a number of infants are under a constant medical supervision for they have become a victim to a now fast-spreading pneumonia. The gloomy scenes of mothers holding oxygen masks to their infants' faces and fathers cramming the corridors outside is by and large a reflection of the rapidly deteriorating health situation in the country. Rahmat, an infant who has visited the hospital already thrice in last few days, is another case of pneumonia. Mothers say this year's winter season particularly has taken a heavy toll on their children's health. The rate at which children are reaching hospital in absence of first aid relief material and medicine at their homes is both unprecedented and worrisome. بچی مریض شد انو سر زمستان از قسم مریض میشه با تشویش ازی هستم که چه قسمی زمستان تیر خود شوه دیگه وضعیت ما خوب نیست دکترا گفتن که ایره خانه بوردی باید گرم نگاه کنی As per the data released by the hospital more than 67000 children were admitted in November alone for pneumonia coughs asthma and respiratory conditions there were only 3,700 cases in the same month the previous year. Observers say the crisis is only going to get worse in coming days. Taliban's imposition of a ban on female NGO workers has led to over 180 international organizations suspending their humanitarian operations in critical winter months. In such a scenario, when people are short on both food and money have nowhere to go. They cannot pay bills even for a disease like pneumonia, let alone footing major surgery or a prolonged disease. I had a doctor in the house, and I had a child in the house. I had a child in the house, and I had a child in the house. I had a child in the house, and I had a child in the house, and I had a child in the house. More than half of the Afghan population was already reliant on humanitarian aid before what appears to be the beginning of a health catastrophe in the country set in. Afghanistan's GDP shrunk by 20% last year 
and now it finds itself in a spot of bother as far as the financing the structural institutions of the country are concerned. It has further been hit by a cut in Western investments, enforcement of sanctions and freezing of the country's central bank assets. دیگر روز ساعت یک و نیم ساعت دو ساعت برابری است که هر چقدر کار شد دیگر وضعیت ما خوب نیست Even before the health situation emerged in Afghanistan this year the international committee of the Red Cross which supports several hospitals in Afghanistan said it had seen a 50% increase of children under 5 admitted for pneumonia in 2022 compared to the previous year now when the Taliban is hell-bent at further marginalizing women from mainstream, it remains to be seen how the situation pans out from here on. The major question that arises at this point is will the children and women ever get the treatment and justice they deserve? The enormous growth of the Indian spice market has created a flurry of business opportunities for those seeking high returns on small investments. Stepping up their marketing initiatives, the leading spice producers are also coming up with innovative products. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, demand for Indian spices has increased even more due to their immunity-boosting effects. Their continually increasing demand is spiking the Indian spice market. Take a look. Turmeric, coriander, garam masala, black pepper and red chili. These spices, among many, many others, play a vital role in Indian cuisine, adding unique flavors and taste to food and drink. The traditional spice box, known as a masala daba, is one of the necessities in an Indian kitchen. A masala daba typically comprises several small metal cups, with each containing a particular spice. Indian spices are used in a variety of products, such as sauces, bakery goods, frozen foods, beverages, dressings, packaged foods, and many more throughout the whole world. About 75 of the 109 varieties of spices listed by the International Organization for Standardization are produced in India, a country famous for its spices. Uh, I think uh, we will be touching an annual uh, growth between 10 to 12 percent very soon. And uh, the Indian government has, uh, they have a target to touch about 19.5% uh, annual export sales. Uh, so we can, you know, be out there in the global market uh, as, as a, you know, a Make in India brand. In India, the production of different spices has increased significantly over the past few years. According to a report by the Government Trust India Brand Equity Foundation, 10.88 million tons of spices were produced in 2021 to 2022. Many of these spices are exported from the country to numerous nations worldwide. India exported spices and spice-related products to 180 countries during 2020 to 2021. China, the USA, Bangladesh, Thailand, UAE, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, the UK, Indonesia, and Germany were top destinations for Indian spices. And more than 70% of all export revenue in 2020 to 2021 came from these markets only. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, Demand for Indian spices has increased even more due to their immunity-boosting effects. The export of spices registered an all-time high in volume and value during 2020 to 2021, growing by 17% in U.S. value terms and 30% overall. Their continually increasing demand is spiking the Indian spice market. हमारे मसाले दुनिया भर के देशों में जा रहे हैं, especially अमेरिका में बहुत मसाले जा रहे हैं। हमारे मसालों की क्वालिटी इतनी बढ़िया है 
कि ज़्यादातर देशों में उनका इम्पोर्ट है The enormous growth of the Indian spice market has created a flurry of business opportunities for those seeking high returns on small investments. Stepping up their marketing initiatives, the leading spice producers are also coming up with innovative products. With the heavy investment in social media platforms, the market players are engaging with customers to comprehend their demands and tastes. Industry experts believe that India has maintained the appeal of its spices. and will remain the leading producer for several years time now for asia this week the story is from across the continent at a hospital in shanghai suburbs patients on beds line the corridors of the emergency treatment area and main lobby most of them elderly and several breathing with oxygen tanks A notice on a board advised that patients would have to wait an average of 5 hours to be seen. This has become a common scene across China's hospitals where emergency wards were filled to the brink and patients queuing in line for hours to get treatment after Beijing abruptly scrapped its stringent COVID-19 controls last month. In some of the most critical remarks to date, the WHO said this week that China has underrepresented hospital admissions. intensive care unit patients and deaths Chinese health officials have said only deaths caused by pneumonia and respiratory failure in patients who had the virus are classified as covid deaths a definition which WHO said was too narrow Disease experts outside China say its approach misses other widely recognized types of fatal covid complications from blood clots to heart attacks sepsis and kidney failure The Fukushima town of Japan has become a production hub of a wide variety of fruits, especially from the early spring season to winters. Farmers cultivate fruits like grapes, peaches and pear with a passion and latest technology. This attracts visitors and tourists to Fukushima city. Shoka no kudamono toshite wa desu ne, mazu sakuranbo kara hajimari mashite. Eh so shite eh natsuba no saidai no hin ano hinmoku de arimasu. ももそして、えー、梨、ぶどう、りんご、そして冬場にはですね、えー、加工品であるアンポガキと、ほとんどですね季節を問わずですね果物が生産されているのが福島でございまして、フルーツ王国福島でございます。の日本のねぶどう業界のね救世主でもあるシャインマスカットですね今皮ごと食べられると非常にあの若い人からですねあるいは高齢の方まで非常に好まれている。これもですね、年々今増えておりますね。Fruit growers in Fukushima have a passion to cultivate new varieties of fruits. Fukushima pears are cultivated with improvement in cultivation methods. Aochi Juku is a village with traditional Japanese houses. Thatched roof is continuing since Edo period, which attracts many foreign tourists. The specialty of Aochi Jiku is negi soba, a variety of noodles. Fukushima's taste satisfies visitors' curiosity of relishing green onion and noodles. Autumn leaves and thatched roofs are famous in Japan and have very beautiful scenery. In winter, it witnesses a heavy snowfall and the entire village turns into a fantastic landscape. It's been 11 years since an earthquake had hit the eastern part of Japan. Fukushima town has recovered and has started attracting tourists and foreigners. Fukushima town in Japan has recovered after the 2011 earthquake. Authorities here are doing continuous efforts to ensure that the safety measures are maintained in the city. This includes the continuous checking and disclosing of radiation levels in the city. Fukushima 県の主要都市の空間占領率の推移の表になります。こちら23年の4月からこちら令和3年の9月までですけれども、空間占領率は急激に下がってその後横ばいという形で
、現在の空間占領率というのは、かなり低い水準に保たれております。福島県の空間占領をあの世界と比較しますと、例えばあのソウルでいけば 0.12 マイクロシーベルトパーアワーですし、世界の主要都市とほぼ同水準の空間占領率になっております。Authorities in Fukushima Prefecture have set up monitoring posts in different cities and towns to detect radiation. This data is being collected and published also by the authorities. To keep safety of food in Fukushima, precise monitoring of radiation level is undertaken by the experts. Earlier, importing food products from Fukushima was banned in around 55 countries, which has now been decreased to 12. Citizens and administration in Fukushima are doing continuous efforts so that this number reduces down to zero. Moving on. Rhythmic folk melody and dances in vivacious traditional attires and grand feasting marked the colorful celebration of Gang Nagai festival across Manipur. It kept alive the flame of unique cultures and identity of Kabui tribe. So let's take a drive to celebration of Gang Nagai. The state of Manipur soaked in the celebration of Gang Nagai, a post harvest celebration by the indigenous tribe of Kabui Naga in the northeastern Indian state of Manipur. <laughs> People gathered in large numbers to witness a host of events, which included unique traditional dances by the locals. The activities offered adrenaline rush to the visitors. Close to the heart of the Manipur crowd, the festivities began with prayers to the god, dance, music, and feast followed. No, not only me, but all the youths are so eagerly waiting <laughs> for a year long because it's the best, the biggest festival among ourselves. So we are so happy and excited. Gangnagai is celebrated with great enthusiasm to keep people closer to the culture and heritage of the tribe. Performing cultural arts and narrating the history of Kabui tribe. Through dance and music is one way to keep the youth enlightened. Cham thong or vegetable stew, steamed vegetables and fish, romba, muruk mitpa, singaju, and chakao ki are some of the festival special dishes that people come here to try from faraway places. We usually celebrate the Gangai seven days in earlier time, but now due to some uh, so many modernized uh, com coming on, so we have limited the festival to five days. We Kabui we usually go together with the rituals also. So in this Gangai we have. Uh, Uh, so to say, a part of rituals which cannot be forgotten, forgotten which has been practiced from the uh, time immemorial. This five-day-long festival is celebrated with prayers and invocations to God. The locals also perform various sacred rituals to pay respect to their ancestors. The festival reflects its culture and preserves the indigenous festivals of the tribes. People also remember their ancestors by making offerings and decorating their graves. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.